All right, we've all seen some finger exercise videos, maybe have a book or two on it, and we might still be asking ourselves the questions, what is this doing for me? Is it actually working? Can I track my progress? How do I make it less daunting, less boring? Can it be better, can it be fun? And I'm here to answer those questions for you with a definite yes. Uh, we're gonna study a way of exercising your fingers, but not only your fingers, your mind and how the guitar works, and we're gonna get it done quite easily, and I know that you can do it. Welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Today we're gonna be talking about worthwhile while finger exercises. Uh, we're going to hit it right on the head right now. All right, so the way that I approach finger exercises is that they should involve your mind. They should involve how the guitar works, and of course they should involve your fingers. The whole point of finger exercises is to get your fingers to not become mechanically dependent on you know scale shapes or familiarity. It's to keep everything working individually so that when you call upon these fingers on any context that they can go where they need to go. And so what I like to do is I like to take a riff that I know very, very well. And you can do this with any riff that you know very well. That's the, that's the key. And you take the riff and you play it, which in this case, we're gonna start with uh, Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. I'm just gonna show you the first little part, right? This. take that riff, and I know it well, I've played it for 20 years, and what you want to try doing is try playing it in at least one or two other spots. And what this does for you, and you're going to find out, is you have to try and keep it up with the tempo. You have to try and play the riff exactly how you can play it in speed in the regular position. And what you do is you're going to find your start note, okay? Very simple. That's my start note. What note is this? Well, this is an E. Now, if you don't know that, you can hum it out. But this E is in two different places right now. Uh, it's here, or it's here. And how do you do that? Well, it's very simple. If you have a note on the A string, you can, you can figure this stuff out. If you have a note on the A string, five frets back on the D string is the same note. And then five frets up on the E string is the same note. All right, seven minus five is two. Seven plus five is 12. All right, and this works for uh, all the strings except for the B string, we'll get there. So if I had a note or riff that started on the A here, right, you could subtract five and that'd be on your open A, that's the A string, all right? So here's your A, subtract five, you're on their next string over, and that's five. If I was on, let's say, the D string ninth fret here, just gonna show you, all right, this ninth fret, well, if we subtract five, nine, uh, f I'm sorry, nine minus five is four, fourth fret of the G string. Right? If we add five, nine plus five is 14. It's up here on the A string. When you subtract, you go one uh, string uh, thinner, and when you add, you go one string thicker. And if that blew your mind for a second, take your time and figure that out. But that's the way you want to start. That's the easiest way to find the first note. So I have this riff, and I can find that first note here, here, or here. Remember, when you subtract five, you go to the thin string. When you add five, you go to the thick string. And that works for E, A, D strings. All right, so once you find your first note, believe it or not, the guitar is laid out in such a fashion, at least with the first four strings, that uh, things kind of feel the same. If you watch me this, you know, I'm gonna find that first note, look at my fingers. So this is the part here, once you find your first note, you are gonna have to listen and like really try and think of where are my next set of notes? This puts your ears in the game, all right? You might say, okay, well, do you easily just transpose it? Or do you have to figure it out? And it's both. Sometimes the riff is gonna feel exactly the same, but there's gonna be usually like a hiccup, and we'll talk about that. So, I have my riff. And I'm gonna find my first note here. And if I were to try and figure this note out, or this riff out right here, it plays a lot differently. Now, this is like one of those cooking shows. I had that riff already figured out, all right? It's like I put it in the oven and took it out of the bottom oven. But you wanna sit, and this is how you do it. Once you find your first note, you know there's gonna be some sort of like familiar footprint, we'll say. Uh, and it's gonna take some time. Your ears, you, you know, you have to look and see if you can nail it down. If you have to go back to your original riff. And kind of 
figure it out, that is totally cool and it's totally worthwhile and you should do that. The only trick is finding your first note and then the riff should uh, fall down underneath your fingertips as you listen and as you try to figure out that stuff. So now, I know I'm talking fast and I had a cup of coffee, but you got a slow down button right about there, I think. All right, so once you have the riff footprint, you want to try and play it in a new place at the same time or the same tempo. Now, if you watch here, I'm using a different finger combination to play this riff. Ooh. And because you're using a different combination of fingers, you have a finger exercise now that not only put your mind on the guitar neck, but also rearrange your fingers to play it in a different way and upheld yourself to playing it in time. Your finger exercises are okay, but if you're not playing to a tempo, then how do you know if your fingers are gonna be able to do it in real time, whatever your riff is? So you have this. Or you have this. I'm gonna try and take that riff and transpose it up here. And you're gonna see, you know, it's gonna feel 99% the same, but we have a hiccup. And in doing this, solving that hiccup is where your finger exercise, your mind exercise comes into play. And so check this out. I have my first note here. I found my first, my first note on the E string. I added five. You, you and you add, you go up to the, uh, sorry, you go to the thicker string. And this riff feels exactly the same for the first part. play the riff as it kind of feels, oops, that's not it, then now you have to sit and discover. You don't have to be great at theory, you're going to go, okay, that's the wrong note, oh, that sounds too high, that might be it, yeah, that's it. Now all of a sudden it's going to feel very awkward, look at this move. Awkward, this is a great time to develop a new pattern of finger work to make that riff smoother. And when I was doing this, I said to myself, I gotta get myself ready for that move. I'm gonna use my pinky here so my first finger is in place. For that moves instead of me stretching back, and then I'll use my middle finger here. And so you can see how I have to shift my fingers. Again, it takes some time in figuring the riff out. I'm trying to save time by showing you, but I know I talk a lot. But I'm trying to, you know, show you that when you take your time, you, you're going to develop one or two new pathways to your mind, your fingers, and the guitar neck. And you want to sit and discover them. And then when you have one or two new places to play, you want to try and play all of them at the same speed. This is where your finger exercises are worthwhile. You can tell if they're working because, my gosh, they don't feel the same. Oh, my gosh, right? But I'm doing it. I'm playing it at, at the same tempo. So you have your instant like success, your instant reward by saying, you know what? I'm moving my fingers in a different way, and it's making music. So I know that these, these finger exercises are working. So check this out. Of course, this is a Stitch Method video, so we know I'm going to screw it up. Here we go. There it is. There's the, ex there's the mistake. I knew it. Let's do it again. better you'll get, all right? But let's save us some time. I'm not going to edit that one out. And you want to take your favorite riff. If it's a slow riff, if it's a fast riff, if whatever it is, as long as you know it well, you want to try and transpose it. The first step to transposing is just finding that very first note. Once you do that, it should be, uh, it should be downhill, like easy, or a little tiny bit uphill just to figure out what comes next. You're going to have fun. That's part of the journey, all right? So let me show you two more riffs like this, just so you can see the worth, you know, and, 
and show you that you can do this on different levels. All right, so if we take this very iconic riff, Pretty Woman, you know, the idea for this guy is to show you, okay, I'm gonna try and play it in a different place, but I really can only play it, you know, when, when I try to do this, I found out I can really play like a one other place that uh, sounds right. And so I took the first note and said, okay, let's, let's try and get this note onto the E string. for a couple seconds and just figured out this guy and look at that that's a finger exercise in itself you can see all these like crazy stretches and kind of maneuvering and the idea again is to keep it in tempo and here you can kind of switch back back and forth between these two positions and try to keep the riff going like okay and I'm telling you you feel it you totally feel it you feel like you know this like okay I got to think my way through this and you're hyper like on it but once you get it you're going man my fingers are actually moving in ways they haven't moved before and it's the pure beauty of doing finger exercises that are tied to a riff that you know trying to keep it in tempo the last example I'm going to show you is I'm going to take a song that I kind of already talked about on my channel it's by one of my favorite bands fish and it's a it's an easy kind of riff it's called free and the idea here is that this is a chord based like melody and it starts with a D chord and, and if you don't know this stuff it's okay you can watch um, and you, I'll try and post that video down below if I have it but the idea is it's all chords let me show you the riff D C E minor, D, G, D. And with that knowledge of playing the riff, sorry, it's like, okay, well, let me try and play that in a different place. And so if you're not familiar with the cage chord system, a video or playlist will be popping up right here. Trust me, you know, I found a different voicing of my D chord, which is the C shaped voicing. And I'm trying to find that melody. Sorry, let me, let me raise the guitar so you can see it. There it is. That's my D chord. The next comes a C, and so you just pull it back two frets. See that? You have an E minor. Try to find your E minor voicing wherever you are. I know there's an E minor right here. Let's see. There it is to a D, I know it's a D right here. Now we need a G, right? And I know it's a C-shaped G right here, and I'm gonna keep with that theme. There it is, to a D chord. So now you can use it to transpose your chords, see that the melodies that are based from chords can be moved around. These are great exercises. These fingers and even this hand here are gonna be doing something different that you're not used to. This will keep you away from being like pattern based all the time and having your fingers just do the same thing. If you find yourself kind of like playing the same kind of moves in a pentatonic, these types of exercises are going to give you some freedom here. And so really quickly, I just want to talk about the Patreon practice sessions. It's going to be very simple. I mean, almost a bore to watch. I'm just going to film myself trying to uh, learn a uh, fish riff that I've known for 30 years, but I knew it incorrectly. And you're just going to watch me try and do it in two other spaces because uh, in this video, I believe you know the idea. You should know the riff. You should find that first note and try to get the note up to, te sorry, try to get the riff up to tempo. Automatically, different fingers will be uh, used. And so uh, I'll be a little vulnerable on the Patreon practice sessions, and you'll kind of just watch me practice, all right, and screw up probably a lot. So if, you know, finger exercise videos and books, um, you know, make you feel like, you know, you're putting too much effort in and not, don't know where the reward is, this method is going to work for you. I promise. Thank you for being here on another episode of Stitch Method. Talk soon. Bye-bye.